punish anyone who blocks my path. The blood that flows through her veins is special and extremely dangerous. If showing pity would put my allies in danger, I will not hesitate to kill her. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. We just overcame the very, very difficult um, battle where we lost people, or would have lost people once again. I used up too many Divine Pulses trying to save Gilbert, but that's because people were like, yeah, make sure you don't let anyone die this time. So I was trying to keep everyone alive, and Gilbert is so frustrated. I do think I probably could have done that very, very, very methodically and easily by just keeping people out of the archer's range, but Gilbert's an idiot. On that side, it makes sense that your students were upset. I wonder if those relics truly hide such power. I mean, obviously they do, yeah. Yet even still, that power seems familiar. That form as well. As one who wields the sword of the creator, does that mean you possess that power too? Um, actually, that's something we never really talked about, because isn't the whole point of the crest stones in order to contain the power of the weapons, and my sword doesn't have a crest stone? Professor, you have returned. The goddess is indeed generous with her divine protection. Or actually, is it the other way around? Is it that the sword will only work if your rune is pure, but the crest stone circumvents that? However, if you, if you are a very much not, um apt to wield it, it will end up corrupting you. I have already heard Gilbert's report about what happened. See to it that you keep what transpired at the tower to yourself. I know I said this last time, but you do realize that there was a whole class of people there that saw it. People would lose faith in the nobles should rumors spread of one using a relic and transforming into a monster. We can just say he wasn't a real noble. Boom. All regions of Fodland would fall into chaos. We must avoid that at all costs. Please ensure the students who accompanied you understand that as well. Have I made myself clear? His transformation into a black beast was nothing short of divine punishment from the goddess. Okay, that's that's clearly not true, Rhea. Sell that bridge to somebody else. Punishment for someone arrogant and foolish enough to use a hero's relic even though they were unworthy and unqualified. Of course, that is why we rushed to recover it. Sadly, we did not arrive in time. The church will formally return the lance to House Gautier, if you would. Oh, no, no, give it to me. I have lancers. If I will not. Like, there's no. I'm, I'm not going to fight the church. Gratitude. I can see that I was right to trust you with this. Please report back. I will tell you of your new mission for the coming moon at that time. All right. What the next mission is? Is your meeting over, Professor? It certainly is. Have you been lurking for me, Dimitri? I was just thinking about something. And does it involve a beast that comes out of nothing? Professor, the possession of relics and crests has been highly valued in Fargus since ancient times. It's far from uncommon for someone to lose their ability to lead their house because they don't bear a crest. Just like Miklon. It happened to my uncle as well. The eldest child of the king. And yet he never ascended to the throne. Well, yeah, if the crests actually allow the hero's relics to be used, it makes sense. Although it is a little bit, because that's just happenstance. Um, but it's not its not dissimilar to, like, um, I'm sure there are some races in Star Wars that the king is traditionally a force user, and it is just kind of like luck whether or not you can use the force. All families whose bloodlines carry the crests of the ten elites are much the same. I, I'm surprised we're hearing about this from Dimitri, because I thought the ten elites were the ruling families of... Um, Lod's area. I can't remember if that's called, like, the Federation or what it's called. But House Gautier takes it a step further and absolutely requires an heir who possesses a crest. Why House Gautier in particular? To that house, the power of crests is a necessity, not a luxury. House Gautier holds the most northern territory in the kingdom, 
and they have fought with the people to the north for many years. The men of the north. The head of that house is responsible for protecting that territory from fearsome invaders, whom they keep at bay with the power of crests and relics. If that makes sense. In exchange for that responsibility, they are granted special privileges within the kingdom. Uh, I mean, like, I agree with Raphael on this one. I believe the same. Ability cannot be measured by the possession of a crest alone. I believe that Margrave Gautier was wrong to disinherit Miklon, simply because he did not bear a crest. Interesting, for some reason I always thought Miklon was a bastard, and... But no, he was... he was disowned. Still, there is always a reason for why such customs stand the test of time. Imagine what this world would be like if no one placed any stock in crests. It would be like the real world, how terrible would that be? Bloodlines that carry crests would dwindle. The metaphorical blade used to oppose threats would eventually rust. <sighs> this same argument has been made time and time again across the years. Both sides are at once right and wrong. That means you're becoming a king, dude. You're starting to understand that there's not objective truth in the world. Come here, you. I believe those with crests and those without should acknowledge the other's strengths and learn to respect each other based on personal merits. And that doesn't apply only to crests. The same holds true for lineage, race, faith, ideologies. I mean, that is a very, very noble sentiment, but you're just like, people should stop sucking. And it's a very hard uh, policy to implement. If we could just accept each other and make mutual concessions one step at a time, perhaps... <sighs> Who knows if that's even possible. Everyone has something that is unacceptable within them. I certainly do. And I'd wager you do as well. Yep, we call it the shadow. True self. I wonder which is best, Professor. To cut away that which is unacceptable, or to find a way to accept it anyway. Well, then it's not really unacceptable, is it? such a difficult task. Yeah, I know. You have shown exceptional skill in leading your students. I am forever grateful for the safe return of the hero's relic. Just as I expected, you have mastered the sword of the creator. Literally never used it, and won't be using it because I'm a fist girl. That sounds terrible. Now then, I shall tell you about your mission for the coming month. Rip. Archbishop. Seteth, what troubles you? Flane is missing. I cannot find her anywhere. Oh, it's this mission. Okay. <laughs> this is where we meet Monica. Always Monica. Professor, have you seen Flane recently? She's in the catacombs. I have searched everywhere. Where could she be? She may be in danger. Oh, no, no, no. What am I to do? Calm yourself, Seteth. Professor. We shall continue our discussion another time. It's really going to take us a month to figure out she's actually missing. <laughs> I know I make fun of that a lot, and I apologize, but it is, it is the great plot hole in this game. Realistically, they should... White clouds. Horsebow moon. Rumors of a reaper. Realistically, what they should do is give me some. Oh, go fight some bandits! And then at the last second, wait, we have to find planes. To creep in from the north of Fargus, Fodlin welcomes the riches of fall. The women spend their days reaping the golden fields, gratefully embracing the bounty the goddess has once again provided. The men venture into the wilds with horse bows and empty sacks ready to be filled with game. I am not using the supplies you're giving me in order to teach the class, sorry to say. As I believe you are already aware, 
Sedith's younger sister Flame has gone missing. Sister. At present, all we know for certain is that she has not left Garrick Mach. I am very curious how you can know that. Flame is not the type of person to just wander off on her own without telling me where she is going. We have searched the monastery thoroughly, but have found nothing. I am now mobilizing the knights to begin searching the town. Troubling rumors have been running rampant lately. I do not wish to consider the worst, but... What rumors? The Death Knight? There are rumors of someone prowling the streets and attacking innocents night after night. The Knights have investigated the matter. They have not discovered any remains, nor have they found any concrete evidence. The people are panicked. They all insist someone called the Death Knight is coming to claim their souls with his blade. There is no way she could have escaped unscathed if she were captured by such a fiend. Where is she? Seteth, recall that impatience begets error. Please do your best to calm yourself. Doesn't know how. I think of your sister as family as well. You know that. That's interesting. I didn't pick up the first time on the, the dot 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 there. You have my support. We will devote ourselves fully, mind, body, and soul to recovering her. Professor, your mission for this month is to help find Flame. The Knights have the town covered, so I ask that you focus your efforts on searching the monastery again. Alright, you got it. We do not have time to waste. You have your orders. I do. Flame I will see the pair. Sedith must be beside himself. So, finding little Flame is our mission for this moon? Leave it to me, Professor. Chasing after girls is my <laughs> God specialty. damn it, Sylvain! Sylvain, even you must agree that now isn't the time for jokes. I hope Flame is okay. I've heard rumors about some Death Knight running around town. Sounds intriguing. I have been hoping to cross blades with him. Yeah, you're not gonna get to. Also, did you guys forget we already saw him once? Felix, please consider how Seth must be feeling right now. In any case, we must start our search at once. Every moment matters. On your order, Professor. Let's try to collect as much information as we can. Got it. Standard deployment. Hi. I'm on the lookout for suspicious individuals. The only place I've yet to check is the library. For a second I thought he was in my quarters. I'm like, and you thought you would find them here? As you wish. Candlelight. And who is that? I mean, uh, it's neither of them. No, it isn't. Impossible. Professor, to do. What are you up to at this hour? Your Highness, my apologies. Oh, none necessary. I'm sorry for startling you. I was just doing some research. By candlelight? Lights? Get some lights on you. Your eyes are gonna go bad. But I'm just about finished. I didn't realize how late it had gotten. We'd better head back to our quarters to do. Until tomorrow, Professor. A most unusual man. Whatever could he have been looking for so late at night? Hmm? That book is quite askew. He must have rushed to put it back upon the shelf. Where we find the book that, um, they, like, set the scrolls away? It seems to be a record of donations from nobility. Arundel. That's not a name I know. That's a name I know. But look at that. This Arundel gave quite a sum each year. That is, until the year 1174. He must have died or fallen to financial woe. Hmm. I can't imagine what this has to do with Flame. Yeah, that's interesting. The the Arundel connection is something I don't remember we actually we actually received in Claw's playthrough. Obviously we ran into Arundel later, like the, it's a name I recognize. Absolutely. You have my thanks for giving me your spare time. I have gratitude. Perfect temperature. 
Oh, she doesn't care about t talk about herself. Yes. I was gonna say cats, absolutely. That's a weird one. Yes. No. Nope, she's not an opera person. I. It would. It was unusual enough that I thought I would try. Oh, that's unfortunate. for you to be inviting me again. All right. Interesting that it does not... You know, like, I was going to explore first, but it is interesting. It's like, no, you will explore and you will find flame. Okay, first and foremost. Unit appearance. Larshi, in battle, glass garb. I don't need her flashing the camera every time she beats someone. Oh, that was distracting. All right, and I'll, as always, I'll be doing most monastery off. Just one small girl who's gone astray has caused all this. We cannot let this stand. You must do all you can to find out where she's gone. Now ask around to see what information you can find. Come now, no time to waste. All right, and of course we're going into support conversations. I don't have any. Felix has one with Yoni. Surprisingly enough. Sorry to keep you waiting. How long did you expect me to stand here? <laughs> I did just say sorry, but I could say the same to you. You were pretty slow to settle on the time. I can't help having a busy schedule. Plus, I thought you could use the extra time to prepare. We can go back and forth like this all day. Or we can get started. <laughs> you were the one who kept me waiting. Let's begin. On my signal? Hurry up. God damn it. That's better. Okay, go! Let's see what you... Huh? Oh, interesting. Is Leone winning? Good job, Leone. Oh, a pit trap? That's right. How you feeling down there? <laughs> Say what you want, but Captain Gerald taught me this one. <sighs> You're heavier than you look. I'll admit, I wasn't expecting that. If this were for real, you'd be dead. Aren't you glad I put straw down there instead of spikes? Yes. I underestimated you. That is, Felix is definitely someone who kind of looks at the world as a battle between weapons and won't think outside the box like that. I suppose your lateness was a ploy to distract me. You're not wrong. I did it to rile you up. Draw you in. You're capable, confident. I was counting on that. So, what do you think about Captain Gerald's training now? His technique worked and he won. What else is there to say? Winning is all that matters. You drew my attention to a major vulnerability. I'll need to be wary of traps. Thank you, Leone. Yeah, I'm glad that Felix is taking it in stride. Seeing as you're thanking me, can I ask you a favor? Will you come watch my next training session? I'd like a few pointers about fighting in close quarters. The loser must pay tribute, I suppose. Yes, I'll help you train. You will? Thanks! <laughs> She's just so gumption-y. Alright. Sylvain, who do you have? You have a lot of people, actually. Wow, you got Leone level rank C. I'm surprised. Uh-oh. Did I do something wrong? Always. Did you spot me sneaking back in this morning? Or is it about that girl who got mad I kissed her sister goodnight? I can explain either way. <laughs> no, I'm not here to get after you about those things. Surely other people have that covered. What I really want to talk about is your behavior during our training sessions. When we're sparring, you're always passing on great opportunities to get the edge on me. It's almost as though you're going out of your way to make me think you're incapable. Nah, I just like giving other people the spotlight. Uh-huh. It's not that you took something I said to heart. <laughs> about how you don't have to work hard to be good at stuff and how that isn't fair. 
I did take those things to heart. We're friends, right? I'd be sad if you started to hate me. There's just one thing I want you to remember. Guys like me, who hate hard work and sort of get by on our wits, it all falls apart eventually. I'm smart enough to know that. That is very true. I definitely got through a lot of school without trying, and it definitely came back to bite me in the end. So, I respect people like you. I mean it. Oh. Is that sincerity? It's kind of creeping me out. It's just so unlike you. Huh? When you say nice things like that, I can't take joy in beating you. <laughs> I want to beat you when you're at your best. That's why it bothers me so much when you don't try your hardest against me. Let me put this a different way. I've always been treated like I'm special, and I'm not. At least, I don't think I am. I'm just tired of people thinking they know what I can and can't do. Well, that's why you have to show them and prove them wrong. And everybody expects something of you, or envies you. It's kind of suffocating. I'd rather people think I'm dumb. That's an inter- This is what I always like when you start getting to the B ranks. You start to get a, a much deeper in the conversations and in the personalities than you expected to be. Well, I mean, I can still be pretty dumb. <laughs> I have to admit, I have a hard time understanding where you're coming from. Just know that I want you to keep being great at everything without trying. <laughs> but I also want you to try. If you stop being that way, I won't have any competition. <laughs> competition, huh? I like the sound of that. Where the heck were you when I was growing up? If I had someone like you back then, I think I may have turned out different. And better, I mean. Anyway, I'd love to chat more with you. Would you like to grab some tea with me, or...? Sure thing. The very next moment I'm free. For now, I need to get to... Yeah, Annette does not slow down. Oh, I see. Some other time, then. I look forward to it, Annette. I think he means that, actually. I think he... That's not just a skirt to chase. He actually does have respect for her. Alright, Hilda level B. Hilda, lovely as ever. I swear, when you're around, the sun shines brighter and everything sparkles. Sylvain, you're looking superb as always. <laughs> Thank you. Are you going out today? If you do, then be careful. I'd hate to think you might hurt your foot again. My foot? Oh, yes! You mean that time you helped me with the book? It must be hard for her to keep up with all of the things she claims. No need to worry. The foot's fine now. Even better than it was before. I noticed, you know, since I'm always looking at cute girls, and you are one of the cuter ones. Your foot was better during the battle. You were running all over, just a regular warrior princess. And less than a day after such a terrible injury. She didn't actually participate in the battle, so you're obviously lying. My friends were depending on me, so I just had to fight through the pain. Hilda, please don't lie to me. <laughs> I knew your foot wasn't really hurt, but I returned your books anyway. Take it from a guy who does his fair share of pretending to be someone he's not. And I say this as a friend, you are a terrible liar. And those books you left in your room for so long? Teachers and classmates needed those, so stop lying. And maybe stop being quite as selfish, too. <laughs> you saw right through me. Yeah, how often has that happened? Honestly, I'd completely forgotten that I still had those books. I really was going to return them. Did the librarian say anything to you? Oh, yeah. I got an earful of yelling and accusations meant for you. Huh? Didn't you just say it was my fault? Nah, I figured the librarian would feel better if they just let loose. No reason to make them wait for you. I'm so sorry. You got a tongue lashing that should have been directed at me. Tell you what, all will be forgiven if you promise three things. One. Stop lying. Two. Take responsibility. Three. And fall madly in love with me. Sylvain, you were doing so well. Aw, Sylvain. I do love you, you know? I just... Wouldn't want you for a husband. <laughs> what? Why not? Well, look at your hair colors. Like, that would not mesh well together at all. Well, not to offend you, but I can't help but feel that your niceness is somehow shallow. My brother would probably cut you into pieces the moment he saw your face. Your brother sounds uh, terrifying, actually. 
We're losing the thread a bit here. <laughs> Evidently, you can see through my act. So, I'll just be straightforward about taking advantage of you. <laughs> well, I'll take what I can get. Just don't go causing trouble for guys who aren't me. Oh, look at him. He's already jealous. It's a deal. Goodbye for now, Sylvain. And annoyingly, that's like where they end. Because these two don't get past rank B. I'm actually curious, do they... Yeah, Leone does get up to A. Now this one must be interesting. Well, hello there, gorgeous. You're looking lovely today. Join me on a stroll around town. Aw, is a sweet girl like you doing all this hard work by yourself? That's no good. Allow me to help. <laughs> Oh, hey, Leone. Sorry, but I'm kind of in a hurry right now. Again, there's the whole... She kind of looks like a boy, so Sylvain doesn't give it... Although, interestingly, their hair colors are a pretty good match. Hey, hey! Get back here! Whoa, no need to yell. Do you need something? You chat up all the girls like that, don't you? What a terrible thing to say. I mean, accurate, but still terrible. I see a girl. I figure it would be rude just to pass her by without at least a wink. Or a nice word. But you knew that. So, I'm going to get going now. See you, Leone. Wait, now, hold on! How come it's not rude for you to just pass me by? Me? Pass who now? <laughs> Damn it. Look at me! I'm a girl, you know! Uh... Oh, I see. A girl. You're a girl. Huh. Did he seriously not know that? How do you... How does anyone not realize? Sorry. I know it's true in theory. But it looks like my brain just didn't want to accept it. But you're correct. You are a beautiful girl in your own right. Yes, that is a statement with which I agree. I freaking... Granted, maybe this says something about me, but Leonie was always my favorite, as you guys know from watching my first... First? First playthrough. I am ever so terribly sorry for being so rude, my lady. How can I ever make this up to you? I... I'm very much sure this is not what Leonie had in mind. Yeah, uh, hang on, back up. Don't get the wrong idea. Seriously, I feel just dreadful about how I acted. This is the first time I've done anything like this. It's shocking that I'm capable of such low behavior. Even if you are a somewhat crude, I mean, spirited girl, that doesn't excuse my... <laughs> what did you just call me? Yeah, you are just digging and digging and digging. Right, of course. I'm sorry. I can't believe I was so thoughtless. And he just walks off. Acting pitiful won't get you anywhere. I won't just forget about this, you know. All right. That that has exhausted those two. Ladies, I'm actually not getting a lot of ranks with the actual army. <laughs> I've seen this before. I seem to remember him using his handkerchief. That won't do. Come, take my hand. Let's get you to the infirmary. Okay, no, he did not take you to the infirmary last time, so this is not the one I've seen before. Are you sure it's okay to be seen helping me? Uh, why would it not be? I thought you only extended your kindness to the nobility. Certainly not. To aid a commoner in need is the most noble endeavor of all. I do. I, I remember not liking Lorenz when I first met him, but he is he is actually awesome. Um, he's one of the few members of the self-important nobility that actually walks the walk as well. Not only that, but you were injured by my carelessness. It is doubly my duty to assist. In that case, I'll gladly accept your offer. I do think I've seen this, actually. Oh, good. There does not appear to be any real swelling, so you should heal swiftly. You know she's a healer, right? Thank you so much for escorting me. Although, I don't think she can heal herself. Quick. Um, Lauren's, like, sprain your ankle so she can heal it, because she also heals herself for whatever she heals you. Walking on it will still be unpleasant. Allow me to lend you my shoulder, at least as far as your room. If you're still offering to help, then I can't say no. There you are, safe and sound. I will take my leave. Thank you again, Lawrence. You know, I think I've learned something about you. He's actually a decent guy, weirdly enough. What is that? In truth, 
It's not that you only extend your kindness to noble women. It's that you can't even see us of lower birth. Wait, what? Excuse me? You and I have been together all this time, but never once did you look me in the eye. I hadn't noticed. But you will have to excuse any perceived rudeness. As the heir to House Gloucester, I have a duty. I must ask you to forget about me. Farewell. Interesting. Forget about him? What could that possibly mean? Interesting, um... Introduction to that. Class 2. Yep. Rank B as well. Ingrid? What's the matter, Annette? You look upset. Don't be upset, Annette. Hey, that rhymes. I'm just so, so sorry. I had no idea. I'm not sure I follow. Take a breath. What's going on? Well, I was really curious about why you're not interested in things like makeup. Oh, I'm actually interested in this as well. So I asked some of our friends about it, and... Oh, I see. I imagine they mentioned that my family was fairly poor, and they probably also mentioned that I lost my fiancé. Correct? They did. I'm so sorry. It was thoughtless of me to try pushing those things on you. We were just trying to share something that you were passionate about. It's perfectly fine, Annette. It's true, my family struggled financially. It wasn't easy growing up, but it taught me values I wouldn't have learned otherwise. And we weren't so poor that I consider myself deprived. I'm sure my family would have bought me makeup if I had wanted it. <laughs> but it never mattered enough to me. Not then, and not now. Oh, so you just never sought that stuff out? Never. While I acknowledge it can be fun, fussing over my outward appearance isn't an instinct of mine. And you don't need to either. You look fine. Maybe because you were drawn by someone that wanted you to look very nice, because they succeeded. A little pale, a little pasty. When I was younger, I'd usually be found covered in dirt, bugs in my hair, and a big smile on my face. Things haven't changed too much since. <laughs> then, when my fiancé passed on, my priorities shifted even further. It reminded me of what's most important in life. Beyond that, it's hard to think of myself changing without him around to see it. Even if it's something trivial like how I present myself. Is she's eventually gonna have to get over the like ghost of the past. But talking to you has helped me realize it's okay to loosen up and enjoy those things if I want. So thank you. Me? Oh, I didn't do anything at all. Except pester. But pestering is important. More importantly, do you notice anything different about me today? Um, I doubt it because I'm sure you didn't change your portrait any. Yes. It's very subtle, but I could tell right away that you were using that makeup I gave you. You could? Oh, that makes me happy. I was trying to apply it just how you showed me. You did great, and it really suits you. I can't tell a difference. Now, again, I'm not sure if that's because they didn't actually change her portrait at all, or if because I'm a guy and I don't know makeup. I think there's a lot I can learn from you, Annette. You've helped me embrace the lighter side of life I quite like. It's my pleasure. Ooh, this is so great. Wanna go shopping to celebrate? <laughs> uh, shopping? But what would we buy? That sounds so overwhelming. Again, she has no money, Annette. <laughs> There's a dress I've been eyeing for a while now. I'm certain it will compliment your pretty eyes. Just leave it to me, Ingrid. I'll make you the most fabulous knight this world has ever seen. Oh, damn it. Well, that does sound fun. I look forward to it. All right, and with that, we end the supports that we currently have available. Obviously, I will now go around do the monastery off-screen, and I will see you for the battle. Forward to it, guys. <laughs>